On this episode, we got a ton of stuff coming at you. We got welding, steering columns getting fabricated. We got our seat going in. We got the motor coming in. This is a lot of stuff we're about to pack into like a really short episode. So one thing that we did is we waited for our seat to come in. We ordered a nice blow motor one from Amazon. And once we had the seat locked in, in relation to the motor in the back, so there's clearance for the motor, we then knew where our steering column would be. So that's kind of the progression we're working on right now is getting the seat in to get the steering in and then get the engine in. Yeah, things are just falling into place right now. Yeah, looking good. We got our seat here. Just a cheap Amazon one. So what we're doing next is we're gonna create the bracing down here for the uh, actual frame. So if you come on the other side, see we did one over here already. Basically just throw it in the tubing bender, create a 45 right there, and then do just a real hard notch right there. So we're gonna do this, and then we also created this piece, which is gonna go just like that. So we'll get a little flare to it, a little depth, also add some structure. So yeah, we're gonna show you guys how to make these pieces for the other side. Let's get started. All right, well, we got that second support all cut up, welded in. Got a little bit of a gap right there, but as our R&D guys would say, you can fill that up. Um, now we're moving on to this sidebar. So since I already have this one done, I'm just marking out the ends here. I'm gonna make my cuts first. It's pretty much the same length. If this one ends up being a little longer, I'll just grind it down on our 12 inch uh, disc sander over there. But yeah, this should go pretty quick. Show you guys how we did this one. As you guys can tell, we've done a lot of tubing notching, and one of the things we figured out is that when you have a really harsh angle, sometimes it's better just to use an angle grinder. Yeah. Uh, we started out with the notcher, got our angle pretty close, but the angle for our back support there was just so strong that we really needed to just get in there and do it by hand a little bit. So we got these things tacked into place, both sides completed. We got our sidebars here completed. We actually added a little flare to them to kick out to the side a little bit. So yeah, so now we can actually, I'm gonna throw the axle back on the rear and then try to figure out the spacing for these crossbars. That's where we're gonna mount the seat. Probably use some like one inch box tubing to actually bolt the seat to, but yeah, it's starting to look like a go-kart now. So for the seat, we went with a pretty easy design. That was kind of the theme of this build, mm -hmm. uh, what's practical and easy. So we uh, put in some one inch square tubing that we uh, welded in with some cross beams so that they were sturdy in there. And we obviously just matched it up to the bolt pattern on the bottom of the seat. So that way you put the seat on those cross rails, bolt straight up through the tubing, and you have a seat locked in that's safe and comfortable. Yeah. 
It was actually probably the easiest part of this whole build. Yeah. All right, Joe, what do we got going on now? All right, so a little change of plans. Dave had originally started working on a different method for mounting up the steering column, but Mark suggested that we make a collar, so he's gonna help us thread one or bore it out to make a collar from round stock. Um, so how's this gonna go, Mark? It's gonna go pretty quick. Just let me change around what we got going here. Mark's a man of few words. All right, well, Mark sets up. We'll come back in a little bit later and show you how it's done. That's gonna be nice. You put a little thin film of grease in there, it's gonna be real nice steering. So with that vertical shaft already mounted up for the steering column, we wanted to make sure that we had as much structural support as possible. This thing, if we're ripping through the field and we're going left or right and we're tugging and holding onto that wheel, we definitely wanted to make sure it didn't go anywhere and one single bar was not gonna support that. So Joe came in, made a bunch of different gusset support bars for it. We had one on either side and then one that went kind of under our seat. It's not too obnoxious or anything though. No, not at all, you barely notice it's there. Just like we ended up doing the seat mounting, we did the motor mount the same way. We used two one inch pieces of square stock, just notched the ends, put them from front to back on our actual go-kart frame. Uh, this way we're saving weight by not using a big plate. If we ever do need to move the motor front to back, we can actually just drill new holes. So I think it was a pretty simple design that worked well. Yeah, we kind of just went the same method we did the seat and it seems to work out pretty good. Yeah. At this point, the frame was pretty much how it was going to be. Everything was in place, all the gussets, all the extra support beams, but it was only tacked in. So now it was just kind of taking our time and just dove in and finish welded as much as we could. I mean, everything. Yeah, we welded for probably four hours. Well, this is another good point to bring up, Joe. Okay. So while we mentioned we're not professional fabricators by any means, correct, we're correct. also not professional welders. <laughs> so one of the things that we came across was some of the welds, we didn't probably clean up the areas enough. So later welds, we made sure we did that. Uh, we also had some gaps where maybe some of our tubing didn't meet up perfectly. Uh, we figured out how to do that. So our welds might not be the prettiest, and I would never claim them to be, but they are definitely strong at this point because we made sure we melted that metal together. Next thing is paint and assembly. Yeah, basically that's where we're at at this point. Um, it's fun looking back and getting this far and then realizing the little things that we didn't necessarily do. Which there were kind of a lot of. Yeah, oh. but we kind of expected that. We knew there'd be some fine tuning at the end. Yeah, we'll show you on the next episode what kind of things we forgot and hopefully things that you guys, when you build your go-kart, will not forget. Yeah. As always, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified every time one of these videos are released. So we'll see you guys next time as we wrap up this build.